come back to the custom tactics and instructions, the rank one meta. I'm going to go through all the custom tactics and instructions as usual. Don't forget we've got a defensive formation uh, and it gets aggressively or more attackive, should, or attacking should I say, more aggressive as it goes on all the way to your ultra attack in 4 2 4. Um, we have made some changes and for the sole reason, let's be realistic now, it is now what, June, almost July. Um, I know most of you guys want to have fun now and enjoy what's left of the formation. So I thought, you know what, let me release some of the formations that I haven't released that I've just kind of kept behind really because other formations have been better. But we keep the 4 2 3 1. I think that will always be in every single formation. In fact, I can probably make a prediction. Unless the game changes severely, even though the 4 2 3 1 has been nerfed from a couple of years, with the CDM has been a bit more higher up, it's still the best formation in FIFA and always will be. Um, I have this as my defensive formation. This is the formation where the striker joins the attack as well. So it defends naturally in the 4 2 3 1 and it attacks in the 4 2 3 1. But when you want to, you can have a striker join the attack. For those that are wondering, I use a striker here with high defensive work rates and medium. That's why I use the team of the year, not the team of the season, Cancelo. And I use the D-pad tactic um, extra striker so they can go forward. So when we defend, basically this is the formation to start the game or to close the game out. We have balanced tactics. We have long ball, which I still think is very, very imperative on the 4-2-3-1. Unless you use a lot of L1 triggers yourself. Even I use long ball and I like to use L1 triggers heavily. And forward runs, my personal preference for the 4 2 3 one It's been that since the game has come out. We're just a bit wider when we're attacking just because the extra striker to compensate for that. And we've got one player in the box. I can always use a D-pad tactic, get players inside the box if I want to overload that. So that's why I left it on one. Now for the instructions... Um, basically, for the strikers, stay central, come back in the fence, and all three cams get into the box and come back in the fence. Both stadiums on cut passing lanes, step out attack and cover centre. If you want to, you can always put one of these centre mids on balanced or get forward if you want to. It's personal choice and personal opinion. Uh, if you deem that to be too attacking, just leave it out as, as I do on stay back. Remember, you can always, don't forget, you can always do one twos and trigger these players manually yourself inside the game. So don't feel like you need to do it just because I suggested it. Um, the idea is I take some suggestions where you can tune it for your playstyle to make something a bit more attacking, a bit more defensive. Both both left back and right back stay back conservative overlap. To be honest, um, you don't really need conservative, but I just like it. In, in the beginning, it was for stamina, and for the, but I still use it for sometimes a right back goes forward too much when there's a through ball coming in behind. Um, and I don't li I like them to stay in position as opposed to going for the ball because you might know that people, you know, they, they chip it over and they bounce over. They kind of like do like a, like a kick up. Sometimes that's irritating when the left back, right back push forward. Um, but don't put conservative on a centre back. So do not do that. That's what makes sure you don't do that. Goalkeepers on balance as well. And don't forget them. If you want to, of course, you can increase these. It's a 4 2 3 1, so you don't have to change them too much. Um, if you are playing, by the way, on, on new gen, you may want to increase the depth to about 55. Just want to mention that as well. Now, the 3 4 1 2. Um, I've yet to release this. This is basically the 3 5 2. When a game came out, I, there's two formations that I really liked was the 3 4 1 2 and 3 5 2. Um, you, if you're part, if you do watch, listen to the foot podcast, I'll have a discussion with Japes with this. And um, before really, th these kind of formations really became the meta. And he used to use the 3 4 1 2 quite a lot. And to be honest, I kind of gave it another, another shot. And I like it, but it's not as stable as the 3 5 2, just because you have the CDMs that sit a bit deeper. So this is going to be more attacking than a 3-5-2. Just bear that in mind. Um, but when you're recycling the ball, if you ever found the 2-5-2, those CDMs are a bit too far away. They're actually closer in the 3-5-2. So if you like the 3-5-2, but you want to make it even more attacking, then this is definitely the way to go. So what we've done is for the tactics, we've got balance, 40-60, long ball, direct passing, and seven players inside the box. Of course, we want to be very attacking this formation. This is, let's say, for example, if you're losing, but you still defend in a 5 in fact, we can make it defend in a 5-2-1-2 as well, just by putting one of the strikers on comeback and offense. Um, you can do that as well. So what you can do, for example, I'm just going to put Cancelo here. I'm going to put, I'm going to put Cancelo in striker. And that way, Cancelo can also play that center mid role alongside Bernardo Silva and Declan Rice. So we have one strike on stay central, come back and offense. Um, that's the guy that's going to be create. That's going to make it. That's going to make it defend in a five. That will be the five, and that will be the Bernardo Silva go here. Declan Rice go here. 5 3 1 1. That's the way you're defending. Um, then we have Eusebio. We have him on stay central, um, stay forward. You can put get it behind if you want to. We're direct pass. I don't really like getting behind. Um, I've kind of made that decision very recently. Um, and I don't use direct passing that much, but I just personally don't like getting behind. Let them just stay where they are. Let AI make that choice. Um, the cams on stay forward and get into the box for a cross. And both the left mid and right mid, similar to the 3 5 2, then come back in the fence, stay wide, and get in get it behind and get into the box for a cross um you can remove stay wide 
but a lot of people forget to use hug the even myself when I'm playing I actually forget to use hug the sidelines so if you forget to use hug the sidelines put them on stay wide um, in the instructions the benefit of using leaving these unbalanced and putting them on um, and on basically um, hug the silence that they're naturally white but they go inside by default so that's why it's better to use, leave them on balanced and use hug the sidelines because they 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 stay wider but then they go into the box when opportunity arises so that's why it's better than stay wide but it's a quick trick for those that do forget to leave these guys on hug the sidelines um both one cdm stay back cover center edge of the box don't forget there's no cut passing lanes so it's not going to be as stable as a 352. I'm telling you guys now in advance, it's not going to be as stable as that. So do be mindful that you could get counterattacked a bit more easier, but it's very much more fun to play, especially when you're attacking and you're trying to get the lead. I'm trying to go back for the lead, especially if you're behind. The other setup we ever want to get forward. Um, the reason for this is we just want to create a numerical advantage and have another player join the attack. And when you're going forward to make it more attacking, um, you can put get into the box for a cross, but I would say preferably leave us on balance. This is my opinion because what happens is sometimes if they're always on getting to the box, is that you'll get the ball to your left mid or right mid and you only have one player left by himself isolated in midfield. And sometimes you don't want that, especially on a counter. If someone's got a 4v4, you basically have a 4v4 straight away like this and you don't want this player to be always going inside the box. Can't let AI decide for you and that's the way that I put it. We have seven players inside the box anyway, so you'll go in most times regardless. And that is the 3-4-1-2. Don't forget, it's exactly the same as a 3-5-2 guys, the only difference is, as I said, you don't have the CDMs. As you can see here, the CDMs, they sit a bit deeper and a bit back. And as you can see here, they sit higher up. So it's a more attacking formation, but definitely defensively, it does have its weak points. Then we move over to the 5-3-2. Um, I mentioned this in the video last, I think it was on Wednesday actually I made this video. Um, it's a formation I liked. I still preferred the 5-2-1-2 over this. Um, the 5-2-1-2 and... 3-5-2 are probably some of the best formations inside the game and that is why I never used a 3-4-1-2 because I had the 5-2-1-2 anyway um, and I thought the 5-2-1-2 is just a bit better than the 3-4-1-2 than the but if I wanted defensive stability now just change to a 3-5-2 do you see what I'm saying so 3-4-1-2 is kind of like in between the 3-5-2 and a 5-2-1-2 if I wanted left mid and right mid. So it was kind of a sticky place. I always preferred the 5 2 on 2 on top because it offers a different dynamic with the left backs and right backs going forward. Um, but yeah, this is a pressure every touch. So if you're losing, for example, you can change this formation. You can use press out of possession loss, but just be a bit careful with this formation. It can sometimes put you out of position a lot of times. Like, you see, when I make these videos, right, a lot of people, they just copy these tactics. They don't listen to what I say. And you're going to read in the comments down below, oh, someone will be like, oh, this tactic is too attacking for me. I don't know what to do because they don't listen. So you can put it on balance if you want to, um, or press on possession loss, or you can leave it on pressure on heavy touch. Um, narrow width, of course, don't forget you're defending in the back five. And of course, as I always mentioned, these spaces are kind of the weak point, especially when the left back and right back are coming back. They try to be as narrow as possible in the initial phases. High depth as well. Fast put up play forward runs. I mentioned this in the video. Fast put up play, I think, for this formation works very, very well um, because you want these guys to run up quickly. And with long ball, they're much slower. But they're progressively run forward. But with fast put up play, as soon as you get the ball, bang, they're running forward. They're getting on that run. They're on the bike straight away as soon as you get the ball in your possession. So the width 55, as I mentioned, just a bit above. And seven players in the box, very similar to the 3 4 1 2 in regards uh, to the width. Um, and of course the players in the box offensively um, then we go over to the instructions so um, as I said in the video I watched the video on Wednesday if you want to see how to make it more defensive but I'll be honest if you're playing defense at this stage of the game honestly what are you doing just come on have fun I mean there's nothing really to play for anyway um, stay central stay forward um, I have my left center mid and right center mid on get forward both of them are on cover center by the way uh, if you find this to be too attacking, you can put one of them on balanced or stay back while attacking. But I love it being very attacking. It's a you know you'll probably score most of the time, and I put both of them on getting to the box or across. The central player you put them on stay back while attacking and stay on the edge, not get into the box. You'll be getting confused with that. I mentioned not to get into the box because you don't want him to because he's your final man. So remember, make sure your your only your last CDM should always be stay on the edge of the box. Unless you have a specific play style where you like to rotate, you like to like switch those players around. Once enemy goes forward, once enemy goes back, you like to rotate like that. Otherwise, in my opinion, leave them on the edge of the box. Let them stay outside the box, guys. Um, cover center as well, very, very important. Left center mid and right center mid, join the attack conservative and overlap. Um, again, um, join the attack, they'll just go by themselves. If you know what you're doing, 
lead them on, stay back. This is if you know what you're doing with deep air tactics, lead them on, stay back while attacking, and then you can use the attacking deep air tactics to force them going forward. So when, he's, when he, both these guys on stay back, they won't go forward. But if you activate the D-pad tactics, it will force them to go forward regardless of this instruction. So don't forget, D-pad tactics, they always override instructions. So I would just say, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have no idea what I'm talking about D-pad tactics, put them on during the attack. If you do, put them on stay back. And make sure they don't overlap. This is also very important. You want them to be as wide as possible. And again, you can use hug the silence on this formation as well. Um, because the narrow section of this formation, they stay in the middle. Um, but when you go forward... Um, the left back and right back are not considered narrow players and that's why they go wide and hug the sidelines. That's why if you try to use hug the sidelines in the 3-5-2, you'll find, or, or three or whatever, you'll find almost next to no difference between these two pl these players. Almost very little. But you'll see the greater difference in all the wider players because hug the sidelines only affects the wide players in the pitch, the left backs, right backs, the left mids, right mids, left wings, right wings. Not the, not the left strikers, the left CDMs, etc, etc. Now, then we go over to the constant pressure tactic. Now, this is, of course, um, I think probably the best best pressure tactic in the game. Um, constant pressure, 70-75, long ball forward runs, a uh, bit of a narrow width because the 4-4-2, I just don't like it being a bit too wide. Six players in the box as opposed to seven. And the reason for that is because you have both CDMs on get forward, um, get into the box and cover center. Um, this is if you need a goal. So we've got both the strikers um, on stay central, getting behind, come back on a fence, left mid, left wing and right wing, should I say. It's basically a 4 4 2, by the way, just a bit more attacking. Left wing and right wing, come back on a fence, get, get into the box for cross, getting behind for both. Again, getting, come back on a fence is very, very important because if you want to press the ball, you need to press the ball in the unit. Don't make the mistake. I see a lot of people, top tier players is different, like pro players, because they manually bring back these players, use teammate contain. If you put four players on stay forward, your opponent's going to hold the ball in between your attacking four and your two midfielders, and you're just going to concede another goal. Trust me, just don't do it. You'll know what I mean. Put his all on, come back on the fence. You'll see they'll come behind the ball, and that way you can press together in a unit to get the ball. Because someone's wasting time. They want your defense to split up. They want your defense to be there, your attack to be there, and they want to play in the middle, in that middle lane. Don't give them the opportunity to him or her. Um, then we have both CDMs on get get forward, cover the center. The reason why is because this, this is constant pressure now. You can leave one of them on stay back, but what's the point? You need to get a goal now. Just go gun cope. You need the goal if that makes sense. And um, I put the left back and right back on stay back and overlap because the way I look at it, the 4 4 2, I'd rather have these two players going into the middle as opposed to these players just lingering on the wing. They don't, they don't even help me. And even if you get countered, then you have two players at the back. I'd rather have a front line of four and all these six players attacking. That way I've got a 4v4 at the back. Then have, for example, these two players, these guys going up, and then my opponent has a through ball, and somehow my two centre mids are beaten with that through ball. And I've already got two centre backs at the back dealing with three strikers, because most people are playing some version of a 3 4 one 2 5 2 one 2 3 5 2 4 one 2 one 2 with two strikers in the cam. So do bear that in mind. Um, and that is the tactics. Um, the weekly tactics and as i said we added these to win um as i said it's all about having fun now um that's why i didn't make a video last week as, uh, because nothing really changed the tactics i made the week before was the last tactic you'll see from this video it's probably still one of the best tactics in the game i don't think i'll ever probably beat that i don't think you can get better i mean if i want to take the mick i could probably just adjust this by 10 produce by five or whatever make make some stuff up but i'm not that kind of guy so um that would be the the greatest tactic but you know this is more of having fun, being a bit more attacking. If you get 17 wins, you might get 16 wins. That's the way you got to look at it. And this is the team. And what, if you're wondering what am I going to do with the team, I'm actually not too sure. I didn't play um, last week anyway because I had some technical difficulties. But I am thinking of getting the new Tecatito card. Getting the new Tecatito card and putting him in striker. He costs about 230k. But that is something that I'm probably considering. Um... But yeah, pretty interesting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. And of course, I'll catch you as usual next time next week. Let me know what other formations you want to see. I think we've gone through all the major formations now. Um, I don't think there's really... I mean, we've done 5-4-1. Five, five, That's defensive. We've done that one. We've done that one technically. Technically, it's 4-4-2. These are all different variations of the 4-4-2, so I'm not going to count them. Done this. Haven't done that. Done that. Done that. Technically, I haven't done that done that done the false nine that's four two three one technically that's these are variations of the four two so you see these are variations of the four two three one you see um then you have done that one done the four two four 
Five four one's not worth playing in my opinion. Five two one done that, but done that, not worth playing. Done that, done. Well, we actually we haven't done the the original blitz formation. That's been nerfed by the way. Um. So yeah. So we based on most of the format. Maybe you know what? Maybe we will go for the three four two one next week. That would be a very nice five attack formation. I got something. Actually, I'm thinking about something right now. Um. But yeah, that's the tactics and instructions. Thanks for watching. Of course, I'll catch you next time. Peace out, guys.